Hi, I'm Gary Rubenstein, and today I'm going to take you through uh, the geometry regions that was administered on June 17, 2010. My advice to you is first to uh, download a copy of these regions. It's freely available at www.nysedregions.org. Uh, scroll down to mathematics and geometry, and the test we're doing is the June 2010. So you can download uh, the exam. Um, and then you can do the exam first, that would be ideal. Or you can just do it one question at a time as I go through it. And if you really pressed on time, like the Regents is in a couple of hours, you can just watch the videos. There are some formulas that they give you in the Regents. You have this reference sheet with a formula for the volume of various three-dimensional objects, cylinder, pyramid, right cone, sphere, and the lateral area of a cylinder and a cone and of a uh, surface area of a sphere. So part one, there are 28 questions worth two points mm -hmm. each, and let's see how this goes. Uh, question one in the diagram below, circle O, there's a chord. A chord is a line segment that connects two points on a circle. Um, it's parallel to chord CD, and that's uh, parallel to chord DF. So you have parallel chords here and they want to know which statement has to be true. Well, there is a rule, theorem from geometry, that if you have two chords that are parallel, then the lengths of the arcs between them are going to be the same length. So AC and BT have the same length, and also since C, or, uh, chord CD is parallel to chord EF, these two things will be the same length. And it will also be true that if you go from A to E, and arc BF, those will also have the same length. So that's why the answer to this is choice one. Good thing to do as you watch these tutorials is you can pause the question right after I say it, take a minute to try to work it out for yourself, and then push uh, on the screen again, and then you can see what the solution is. Uh, moving on to question number two. What is the negation of the statement, I am not going to eat ice cream? Well, the negation of a statement is, uh, it's kind of like putting the word not in front of the entire statement. So instead of saying I am not going to eat ice cream, it's, it's not true that I'm not going to eat ice cream, which is the same thing as saying that I am going to eat ice cream. And that's choice two. Moving on to question number three. This is a three-dimensional picture. It's hard to visualize these things sometimes, but the, the dotted lines are things you wouldn't, you wouldn't see if this was a solid figure, so that's sort of uh, behind the figure. It's a right pentagonal prism. What's meant by that is um, the base is a pentagon with five sides, and the, the other sides, the top and bottom are pentagons, and the other sides are all rectangles because this is a right rectangle prism means that the rectangles are all perpendicular to the uh, sides that make up the pentagon. And they want to know which uh, statement is, is always true. Um, and these are supposed to be the parallel symbols. It didn't, didn't come out for some reason. So take a second to do it yourself. Pause. Welcome back. Uh, is BC have to be parallel to ED? Not necessarily. The BC and ED are on the same sort of plane on the bottom and they would intersect. They're, they're not parallel. The things that are parallel, let's see, FG and CD, um, although they don't look like they're going to meet, they're not officially parallel because they, um, I don't even think they're in the same uh, plane. F, J, and H, I, those look like they would intersect if I continued them. And all that's left is G, B, and H, C, and these are parallel. They're both perpendicular to line B, C. So when two lines are perpendicular to the same line, they are going to be parallel to each other, and the answer is choice four. Moving on to question four. In isosceles triangle A, B, C, AB is, I think this should say, is congruent to BC, which statement will always be true? Well, a question like this, the best thing to do is to draw a diagram. 
So I'm going. It says it's an isosceles triangle. So I'm going to draw an isosceles triangle. And instead of just labeling the vertices A, B, and C, I want to be real careful since A, B is congruent to B, C. These are the two equal sides. Notice how they both have a B in them. So if I put the B here and the A here and the C here, I have an isosceles triangle where AB is congruent to BC. Well, there's a rule about isosceles triangles that if the sides are equal, the angles across from those sides are also equal. And that's why the answer to this question is choice three, measure of angle A is equal to the measure of angle C. Question number five. The rectangle ABCD shown in the diagram below, we reflected across the x-axis. Well, this is the x-axis. And you, when you reflect something, it's kind of like, like the x-axis is a mirror. And um, the closer you are to a mirror, or the, the image behind you in a mirror is the same distance from the mirror as you are. So when A is looking in the mirror, A is one, two, three units away from the axis. So if I go one, two, three units from there, I get the image, which is A prime. D is one, two, three, four, five units away. So if I go one, two, three, four, five units away in this direction, I get D prime. C is 10 units away. So if I reflect it over here, I get a point here. That's C prime. And B is eight units away. So I come down here to negative eight. And when I connect them, I get the reflection, which is a rectangle. And this question is a funny word. It says, what will not be preserved? Now, uh, a preserve is, is when something stays the same, like um, when you preserve like a, a fossil or something, you try to keep it uh, the way it was. So which is not preserved? So is the slope of AB preserved, meaning is the slope of the new line this reflection the same as slope and the answer is no this has a positive slope that has a negative slope so choice one is out the parallelism of AB and CD well AB and CD were originally parallel and in the image they are still parallel so we would say that the parallelism of AB and CD has been preserved oh I see they want to know which ones will not be preserved so the answer is choice one uh, but um, the length of AB, just to go through the other choices, AB has a length, A prime, B prime has the same length, and angle A is a right angle, and angle A prime. So, sorry, the answer is choice one. There was a good lesson there for the kids at home to read the question carefully. What will not be preserved? If you read this question too quickly, like I almost did, I might have written choice one right away. It's good to look at the other choices. Good lesson in life. Number six, a right circular cylinder has an altitude of 11 feet and a radius of five feet. What is the lateral area in square feet of the cylinder to the nearest tenth? I'll draw a picture of this. I draw sort of a circle, distorted circle to get some perspective. Here is a cylinder and the height is 11 feet and the radius of the base is five feet. And they want to know what's the lateral area. The lateral area is the area of this outside piece, kind of like if I unrolled it and made it into a, a rectangle. Well, there is a formula which is given to you on the formula sheet. The uh, formula sheet is over here in a right circular cylinder has lateral area of two pi r h. So back to here, lateral is two pi r h which is two pi, the radius is five, the height, which is the altitude is 11. And then when we run this through our calculator, on our calculator we say two times uh, pi, you could just say 3.14 times five times 11, get our answer, which is 345.4 and uh, that's an answer choice choice number three moving on to question number seven a transversal intersects two lines 
which condition would always make the two lines parallel? Well, when you have two lines, any two lines, a third line that hits both lines is called a transversal. Now, when uh, if the original two lines are parallel to each other, uh, the transversal creates a lot of, it, it creates eight angles. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And all the obtuse angles are going to be congruent. And all the acute angles are going to be congruent to each other. So there's basically only two different angles formed. So let's look at the answer choices. Uh, which conditions would make the two lines parallel? Well, um, if let's start with this. If the two lines are parallel, you have, let me uh, throw this in here. If we already knew the two lines were parallel, we could say that these two, which are called alternate interior angles, are congruent. We could say that this angle and this angle are congruent. That's called corresponding angles. And we could also say that this angle here and this one are going to be uh, supplementary. They're going to add up to 180 degrees. Well, these rules work in reverse also. If we have two lines that we're not sure if they're parallel and we have a transversal, if we know that the alternate interior angles are congruent, that would also tell us that the lines are parallel. That's why the answer is choice number two. Choice three says corresponding angles are supplementary. Actually, corresponding angles being congruent works, but supplementary that that, that doesn't that that wouldn't get them. They have to be congruent. Okay, question number eight. If the diagonals of a quadrilateral do not bisect each other, then the quadrilateral could be a. Well, when you draw a four-sided figure, it's called a quadrilateral. In general, if you draw the two diagonals, the diagonals do not bisect each other, meaning that this is not the same length as this, and that this is not the same length as that. But many quadrilaterals, like, for instance, uh, a rectangle, it's a tri-choice one. If you drew the two diagonals, they would bisect each other. I mean, this equals this, and this equals that. Actually, in a rectangle, the diagonals are equal, so all four of those pieces would be equal. In fact, any parallelogram has the property, even though a parallelogram like this that does not have right angles, if you draw the two diagonals, they're not the same length, but they will bisect each other. So a rhombus is just a special parallelogram, a square is just a special parallelogram, but the answer to this question is choice four, trapezoid. Question number nine. What is the converse of the statement, if Bob does his homework, then George gets candy? To do question, this question and other questions like it, we need to know the difference between the converse, the inverse, and the contrapositive. Those are three things that they're going to test you on. Imagine I had an original statement like, if I watch these videos, I then I will pass the regions. That's a statement which I believe is true. The converse of this statement is if you say, if you swap the two pieces around, the if and then, so the converse would be if I pass the regions, it's uh, and then I, I watch the videos. The inverse is where you say, if I don't watch these videos, then I won't pass the regions. And the contrapositive is where you say, if I didn't pass the regions, then I didn't watch the video. So those are the, 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 the ways you can manipulate the statement. So the converse is the one where you switch the if and then around. So instead of saying, if Bob does his homework, then George gets candy, we would say, if George gets candy, then Bob does his homework. That is the converse, choice one. Just to look at uh, like choice three, if George does not get candy, then Bob does not do his homework. That one's the contrapositive. And choice four, that one's going to be the inverse. Well, that's the first nine questions. I hope you continue watching all the videos in this series to be continued.